We'll go ahead and get started. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us this afternoon. My name is Becca Rabin, and I work for the City of San Francisco Department of the Environment. Um, I'm really glad that you could join us for this webinar. We have some really incredible resources available to us from our local government and our partners. Um, just some quick housekeeping. You can put your questions into the Q&A box in the toolbar, and they'll be answered there, or we'll get to them at the end. Um, we're recording this webinar and we'll share the recording afterwards. And today you'll get to hear from a home energy advisor, one of the free experts available to support you with the Home Plus program. You'll also get to hear from Maggie Gallagher with the SunShares program and Cassidy Wallerstein um, with PUC about Clean Power SF. I'll now hand things off to Jason Green, one of our Bayron Home Plus energy advisors. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Becca. Uh, again, my name is Jason Green, and I'm a Bayrand Home Plus Energy Advisor. And I'm going to go over a few things with you. So if you want to take notes, you can, or you can just watch and listen and then reach out to a free energy advisor like myself. I've got a couple of colleagues on here, Maha Hashwi and Paul Kepke. They're here to answer questions. So as we go, please ask your questions in the uh, Q&A section. So first off, uh, I'm going to go over three sections, Introduction to Bayrand Home Plus, cost-effective residential upgrade options to meet safety, comfort, and efficiency needs, and options to consider prior to solar PV. Next, please. And again, uh, the introduction to Bayron Home Plus, essentially free and, limited, free and unlimited energy advising, energy efficiency incentives. Next slide. Uh, Bayron, what we are, we're the Bay Area Regional Energy Network. We have collaboration of the nine Bay Area, Bay Area counties uh, funded by ratepayer uh, dollars overseen by California Public Utility Commission, CPUC, energy efficiency programs, including single family, multifamily, small and medium business. And for this presentation, it's residential, the single family. Next slide. So essentially we have four primary services for Bay Rent Home Plus. We have free and unlimited energy advising. Uh, efficiency upgrade incentives, trained and qualified participating contractors. We don't pay them, they don't pay us. Uh, they get free leads and they have to abide by and install uh, upgrades that meet our requirements and then incentives are available or can be available. And then we have an, an online home evaluation, which is a great place to start uh, with a free energy efficiency kit that includes light bulbs, um, some water saving devices, and overall information to help you figure out where to start. And again, you can do that also by calling Energy Advising. Next slide, please. So Bayron Home Plus free uh, energy advising. It's unbiased, expert, well-versed in energy efficiency, um, unlimited support and guidance through phone and email, analysis and explanation of potential upgrades, development of energy action plans or energy efficiency action plans. So a step-by-step -step process of who to reach out to, what to do next. And if you have any hiccups or you're any kind of contemplation, you reach back out to us and we help you into those next steps again. Referral to contractors and estimate reviews. Next slide, please. So this is a real quick overview. Um, again, this presentation will be shared later on. And inside my part, there will be uh, links and such like that. You can click on and download parts, uh, different documents. But this here uh, is our basic measures, our upgrades that we have. So I'll go through it real quickly. Uh, some people might be interested in smart thermostats. As long as these uh, upgrades are conducted by a participating contractor installed by them, then they'll get a rebate. Uh, it's not always best. People reach out and they say, I want a $150 rebate for my smart thermostat. It's probably not cost effective unless you're doing multiple upgrades, duct sealing, duct replacement, HVAC replacement with a smart thermostat. Um, you can see there's a couple other there, duct sealing, duct replacement. Uh, we have attic insulation, wall insulation, uh, water heater replacement. Um, we have heating and cooling measures. So gas furnace replacement, uh, central air replacement, or if you're upgrading say from a wall heater or a floor heater, without an AC existing, you would be eligible for a $1,000 rebate for the mini splits or a, a, a ductless mini split. Um, then there's bonus rebates. There's two on the lower there, the electrification appliance measures. Those are two that are incorrectly marked 
A uh, rebate amount is $300, sorry about that. So not $1,000, but $300. And that is for the induction cooktop range or, uh, or cooker cooktop or range you're replacing with a induction. So you're replacing a gas device with an induction. And then the same goes with the heat pump dryer. You're replacing a gas dryer with a heat pump pump or ventless dryers, they're called. Those again, mistake there, $300 max, not $1,000, I wish. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, number two, cost-effective residential upgrade options to meet safety, comfort, and efficiency needs. This is really what uh, energy advising is about. So go ahead, next slide. So there's two things we want to do in a house and things that all owners, it doesn't matter if you live in a cave, if you live in a hut 2,000 years ago, if you live in a skyscraper or a residential home, you want to be able to retain energy and you want to be able to sustain temperature. Uh, the analogy that I give is if you blow up a balloon and you tie it off, the balloon retains the energy. If you take the balloon and you cover it with, say, insulation, a jacket, um, uh, a pillow, those objects can help to sustain the temperature inside the balloon. But if you take the balloon and you pop it, all that air escapes and it goes right through those air permeable substances or materials and you lose all your energy. So people will often say, I need insulation, I need to replace my windows, I need this, I need that. But they're not really looking at the more cost-effective upgrade, which is to simply tighten the home to try to retain that energy. So retaining energy, attic bypass air sealing might be something we recommend, attic top plate air sealing, skylight knee wall air sealing, duct air sealing sometimes. Ducts can leave, leak on an average of 15% just by sealing the ducts you've closed up 15% leakage in your house, which is pretty substantial. Crawl space, bypass air sealing, whole house air sealing, and window and door weather stripping. Again, not window and door replacement. There are many options rather than spending 20 grand on those. Uh, sustained temperature, insulation factors, the attic, vault insulation, wall insulation, crawl space encapsulation, tightening it and utilizing the earth temperature rather than having this big surface area under your feet, which is always cold or always hot. Uh, shade structures or trees, those are pretty cheap and long lasting. Um, high efficiency water heaters, high efficiency heating and cooling, natural static roof ventilation. If any of you guys have uh, five, six, seven, eight o'clock at night, the house still seems hot. It's cooler outside, dead of summer. Why is the house still hot? Most likely the roof can't vent properly, naturally. And that's something we can talk about. And the window film or blinds. Uh, next slide. So these are two, these are two different sections. So we have retaining energy, again, sealing it, tightening it. You can see the top left corner there is a photo of a, of a gun for spray foaming. And they're going to be spraying that in the attic or in a crawl space, anywhere that there are penetrations from outside the environment into the inside environment. You don't want that pathway to exist, so they tighten it up. The uh, right photo there uh, with the um, white um, along the ground of the crawl space, that's crawl space encapsulation. That's what a crawl space could look like. And if you lived on in the Midwest or the East Coast, that's what typical crawl spaces look like. You want to encapsulate it. You want to separate yourself from the vapor or the moisture from the ground, insects, rodents, uh, and you want to seal it against any kind of concrete right before it gets to uh, anything like metal or wood. And that totally separates that space from the earth environment. Then you actually close up up to 100%, usually 80 to 100% of ventilation that leads from the outside into the crawl space. So it's kind of an interesting thing, new for the West Coast, but very, very typical for the East and Midwest. And then that bottom picture is just another example of what air sealing might look like in the attic. Um, sustained temperature insulation, that very right image, the thermal imaging, that's evidence that insulation has moved and that heat from an existing in, um, attic space is making that space hot. And then what happens is the inside of the ceiling, the vaulted ceiling or the flat ceiling gets hot. And that's really difficult for an AC to combat against. Um, the top image there is an attic that needs insulation, air sealing, poorly insulated. And the bottom image there shows a sea of insulation blow in. It can be a variety of different materials. 
that helps to, again, sustain the temperature in the house. Next slide. So how to diagnose? Um, we're very scientific based. Uh, we have best practices recommended by Building Performance Institute, LEED, um, Code, Title 24. We combine many things and that's what our requirements are. How do you decipher if you actually need something? You can do duct or leakage test. So overall house leakage test. You can get indoor air quality testing. That might be for somebody that has a medical condition. There's allergens. People are annoyed by wildfire smoke uh, in the summers or whenever that season is anymore. Um, so a comprehend or a inner, uh, indoor air quality test can really help decipher, is this air inside the house safe for me to breathe? And if not, where are the sources of those, those uh, environmental issues? Um, comprehensive energy audit on the right side there, that's a blower door. Um, it's something that's common in a comprehensive energy audit. Ballpark figure, between $750 on average to about $1,250 for a typical 2,000 square foot house and under. And that's usually a four to six hour long visit. They may include indoor air quality, most definitely have some sort of duct or leakage test involved with that. So those are three different options. If that doesn't sound exciting, call free energy advising. Next slides, please. So um, I think this is actually an old version of my presentation. So I'm gonna to have to go through this pretty quickly. Um, our experiences that we have, we have unexplained drafts, indoor air pollutants, wearing extra clothing, uh, temperature imbalance. What can we do? We can air seal, we can insulate. Um, again, for the left side, unsafe carbon monoxide levels, seasonal headaches, moisture control. What can we do? Hazards testing, indoor air quality. Complaining family members, high energy bills, totally confused, start with energy advising. Start with an energy audit. If you have long hot water times, you're waiting 15 seconds, 30 seconds, and you're, it's super annoying. Uh, you're running out of hot water, water heater sizing, scheduled recirculator. Next slide. My newest uh, presentation, I combine all this so it's easy to understand. Uh, what can we do again? Air sealing insulation. What needs do we meet? Uh, we can run around the house naked. We can breathe fresh air. We understand that the indoor air pollutants are controlled. Uh, Year-round comfort, and again, hazards and testing, uh, indoor air quality, zero carbon monoxide levels, seasonal allergen, allergen control, and humidity control. Uh, through energy advising and energy audit, hopefully you have no complaints, below average energy bills, and prioritize your upgrades so that right now you might do things that only cost a few thousand dollars, whereas in down the line, you might have to replace fat HVAC or have something that's more expensive, but Maybe it's not really a priority right now. Water heating sizing, scheduled recirculator, zero hot water wait times, and plenty of hot water. So those are the types of scenarios that we look at, uh, the types of solutions that we provide or that we recommend, and the types of needs that we can meet. Next slide. Options to consider prior to solar PV. Next slide. So this comes from a, uh, a guide that's produced by Peninsula Clean Energy and a link at the bottom of this page here, it says a pocket guide to all electric retrofits to single family homes. It is a Bible. Uh, it's great. It's the go-to guide um, and it's a hundred pages long. So it's a pretty large pocket guide. Um, but essentially what we're looking at is how to conserve and how to make a house still be uh, operational under a hundred amp panel. So it says a hundred amp panel has enough power for complete electrification of a 3,000 square foot house. The above statement will surprise some readers, but it's true. Uh, most homes don't need more than a minimum the National Electric Code requires, which is at least 100 amps, three wire service for every single family home. The list here talks about things you can do to kind of conserve, to make the house uh, utilize that. What they're talking about when they say 100 amp for 3,000 foot home that's fully ele electric, they're saying that there's an EV in addition to that. There's solar PV in addition to that. There's a heat pump dryer. Uh, there's an induction cooktop. There's a heat pump water heater. Uh, everything that's been in the house has maybe been um, modernized or maybe the panel has gone through and they've uh, combined lighting circuits that may have been 15 amps each. Now they combine that all, maybe six or seven of those circuits down into one circuit. 
So there's a lot of hope for homeowners that have 100 amp circuits, uh, uh, panels that have been told you have to do 200 uh, amp or something. That could easily be a four to $6,000 upgrade and there are other options. So you can look through that list there, use efficiency heat uh, uh, pumps, um, use a condensing combined washer dryer, a vent list that's the heat pump dryer, uh, combined oven and range. Sometimes we're looking at those, they might be a wall oven, that might be 30 amps right there, maybe even 60 amps if it's a dual oven. And then the cooktop might be another 30 amps. If you can combine that, it's one 30 amp instead of three 30 amps. Um, and you can go through that list some more over time. Uh, next slide, please. So these are moving away from natural gas, fossil fuels, other things you can do. Um, all of these devices listed here in these photos are objects or devices that can be replaced by heat pump technology. So water heaters, gravity, uh, domestic hot water, which is not common, but we see them in row houses throughout uh, the Bay Area, um, gas furnaces, floor furnaces, wall heaters. All of those have heat pump options that are all electric. Um, and then to give you guys an idea, if you're not sure what heat pump technology is, if you have a refrigerator, good chance you've got a refrigerator in your house, that's a heat pump. And all it does is it extracts energy from inside that space and spits it out or transfers it to the backside or the underside of it. And that's what is cooling and freezing the objects inside. It's extracting that energy and placing it somewhere else. Next slide. These are uh, also items that can be electrified. Boilers can actually be upgraded to heat pumps. Um, and that heat pump, if you have say a boiler with an Eichler or a Leichler, and you've got a domestic hot water sitting next to it, uh, you can actually replace both of those devices, your domestic hot water tank and your boiler with one heat pump uh, that uh, produces heating for both spaces. Um, there's cooktop ranges. Um, we do get people that say I have an old Viking or I've got an old, uh, not Viking, but they've, they'll have an old, really old kind of turn of the century um, gas or wood burning stove and they want to convert that to induction. There are companies throughout the U.S. that will take old antiques and convert them to induction or convection. So that's an option for you. Otherwise you can get new ones for about 1200 uh, on average. And then fireplace inserts, this is something interesting. Definitely you get fireplaces in the Bay Area and especially in San Francisco. And the bottom photo is a very new uh, kind of unique product that um, there's several manufacturers, but it uses water vapor uh, and LEDs to create the look of fire and they're very realistic looking. You can make the color of the fire any color you want. Um, and then there's a small, usually 1500 watt heater under that that produces a bit of heat. So not something we never recommend that fireplaces should be a heat source. It's more of the ambiance and have friends over and, and drink hot chocolate. Next slide, please. So consider solving long-term issues. If anything that I've said relates to you, uh, you know, you have insufficient insulation, um, you've got moisture sources, you have no idea where it's from, we can walk you through some ideas where it may be coming from and what to focus on. Leaky ducts, maybe you've looked at it, or insulation, you say, my insulation or the ducts have mold on them. That, that dark uh, color in that is actually dust being filtered out through the insulation. So that's what that shows, it's a leak. Uh, Five-star rodent motel, Happens often in the Bay Area, something that we can talk about. Uh, first, to be able to mitigate, make sure that they can't get in the homes. If they do, there's an emergency exit for them uh, and then different ways to deal with that. Exposed wiring, um, a lot of people have knob and tube. We can talk about that. And then panel limitations. Some people have, might have fire uh, prone devices or issues that are just, they can't be expanded anymore. Definitely can talk about that. Next slide. And then uh, here's the call to action. Um, call us, you can email us, um, or you can visit us online. And that's the end of it. Thanks so much. Cool. Thank you so much. Um, I'm definitely going to start saving up for one of those multicolor water vapor fireplaces. Um, I'm Maggie Gallagher, and I'm the program coordinator for Bay Area Centers. Uh, next slide, please. So I'll start off by introducing a little bit about the Sunshares program and what we're offering this year to all Bay Area residents. Uh, next slide, please. 
So Bay Centers is a solar and storage discount program. Um, we negotiate, we pool the buying power of all nine Bay Area counties to negotiate 15% discounts on solar installations and 10% discounts on battery storage. Um, and it's something that's open to all Bay Area residents, obviously including San Francisco residents. Um, and our goal, uh, we're a nonprofit program and we do this with the intent of making clean energy more accessible and affordable and making our whole region more sustainable and more resilient. Um, and this is a limited time opportunity. So um, we have an annual discount program campaign, which we're in right now, um, the last until November 30th. So you have until about the next six weeks to um, start exploring this opportunity. So next slide, please. And Sunshares is a program of the Business Council on Climate Change. Uh, we were originally a uh, part of SFE and have since sort of separated off into our own nonprofit. Um, but we're in a membership-based nonprofit that's dedicated to incubating, scaling, and sharing climate solutions. So we collaborate with our members. You can see a number of them here uh, on different uh, proven climate solutions and accelerating action in the Bay Area. And Sunshares is one of those programs. Uh, next slide, please. And I want to start off by addressing um, why you might want to be thinking about going solar um, and potentially getting battery storage for your home right now. Uh, next slide, please. So really, especially now is the time to go solar. Um, that's for a lot of reasons. One of the big ones is financial. So if you go solar um, before the end of 2022, you'll be able to claim a 26% federal solar tax credit. And this is a tax credit that was supposed to expire, but was recently extended and increased by the Biden administration because it's that important to be encouraging rooftop solar installations in the US right now. Um, and this is also a really critical time um, for climate action and especially to be eliminating or reducing greenhouse gas emissions at any way that's possible. Um, so powering your home with clean energy and putting more clean energy onto the grid by installing solar is an amazing way to do that. Um, on top of that, uh, going solar right now is a great way to support uh, Bay Area jobs and businesses as we recover from COVID-19 and its effects on our economy. Um, and finally, living in the Bay Area, we're all seeing effects of climate change every day. Like Jason was saying, um, we're seeing droughts, we're seeing fires. And if you go solar, you're helping to build resilience to these shocks, um, both for your home and your community by bringing any energy generation closer to where it's used um, and making it more, uh, yeah, more decentralized and resilient. Uh, next slide, please. And especially uh, why might you be thinking about and why are so many people right now interested in adding storage to your solar system? Um, and the biggest reason is for home resilience. So if you just have solar and there is a power outage or a public safety power shot off from pg e or whoever your electricity provider is, um, you won't be able to have power in your home. And that's because um, for the safety of uh, pg and uh, service providers trying to put that power back on. Um, so in order to Char to uh, save your energy that you're generating and discharge it back into your home during an outage, you actually do need a battery. Um, so to keep those lights on, keep those refrigerators running, a lot of people are considering um, adding batteries to their solar systems. And another really big reason is to get additional savings on your solar panels. Um, so you can set up your batteries to charge when energy is at its cheapest from the grid um, with your time of use rate, and then to discharge energy back onto the grid um, when energy is more expensive. Um, and in that way, you can offset more of your electric bill uh, with the energy that you generate with your solar panels. Um, and finally, uh, battery storage really supports renewable energy and helps make solar and wind more 24 seven and reliable energy sources um, and helps us get us to a more sustainable future. Uh, next slide, please. And in particular, uh, why should you be thinking about going solar with sun shares rather than um, going through this process alone? So one of the big uh, benefits that we offer is that we offer you the opportunity to work with pre-vetted and high quality solar installers. So we put our installers through the rigorous pre-vetting and negotiation process um, to verify that they provide a really high quality service. And these are providers that will work with you to make the best decision for you and not um, rush you or try to get you into something that's not the best for your situation. Um, and that, that's one of the guarantees that we provide. In addition, we offer those discounts that I mentioned. Um, we offer a 15% discount on turnkey solar installations, meaning uh, the full price of installation, including equipment and uh, labor and permitting and other costs. And we also offer a 10% discount on battery storage. And 
In addition, uh, because we have three selected installers with SunShares, um, we offer you the opportunity to compare up to three proposals uh, without making any commitment and for totally for free. Um, and finally, since 2016, um, SunShares has helped over 900 homes install solar and has installed over 100 battery storage units. So we really know what we're doing, um, especially in the Bay Area, we have a lot of experience. Uh, next slide, please. So now I'll talk a little bit about how exactly SunShares works um, and what it might be like if we do choose to participate. Uh, next slide, please. So your options with SunShares, I mentioned this a bit earlier, but um, you have three basic options and it's okay if you don't know exactly what you're interested in, if you're just starting this process, or if you are very specifically interested in one of these, we're able to help you um, no matter where you are. So, um, we offer the opportunity, first of all, to go solar, to get solar panels on your roof and get that clean energy um, generated that you own. Um, we offer, also offer the opportunity to um, go solar and get a battery storage unit at the same time. So not only can you store and start selling that clean energy, you can also store it for your own use with the battery and have it on hand if there is an outage. Um, and finally, if you already have solar, we offer the opportunity to add a battery storage system to your existing solar system and start getting those resilience benefits. Uh, next slide, please. And so if you do decide to go solar, um, you'll go through a pretty similar process no matter who you work with. Um, and if you do it with SunShares, what our installers will start off with doing is evaluating your situation in order to generate a proposal. Um, so they'll start off by looking at, first of all, um, your roof's exposure to sunlight. That's the most important thing to see, not only whether solar is viable for your home, um, but also uh, how to design the system so that it can mass maximize the sun exposure you do get um, to generate energy. And they'll also look at your roof itself. So they'll look at what it's made out of, the angle that it's at, and also its condition. Um, they'll look at your energy usage in order to correctly size the solar system to generate um, the amount of electricity to offset those bills optimally. Um, and then if you're interested in battery storage, they'll also talk to you and start looking at your essential loads, which is what you want that system to be powering in the case of an outage. Uh, next slide, please. And so if you go through this process with SunShares, it really starts with signing up on our website. And after I stop talking, I'll put some links into the chat so you can check out our website. Um, but if you do sign up, you will be able to choose um, from our three installers that we have selected, um, whether you wanna hear from all three of them, or just one or two. Um, and depending on what you choose, you'll hear from those installers within seven days. Um, and they'll be contacting you to start the process of evaluating your roof um, and generating a proposal for you. And so you'll be able to then receive and review your proposals. And again, um, there's absolutely no commitment involved in seeing those proposals and you can see up to three. Um, and you have until December 31st uh, to sign a contract if you do want to get the SunShares discount. Um, and then typically solar installations take about four to six months from the time of contract uh, signing a contract to finishing your installation and getting um, your system plugged into the grid. So you can expect your installation to be done um, sometime in spring 2022 if you do go solar with uh, SunShares this year. Next slide, please. Um, and I also want to mention some stuff about um, going solar right now. It's a really growing industry and there are a lot more options than there were before, even just last year. Um, so there's a few metrics that you can look at to really evaluate your options. Um, but I think it's good to know. And it's a bit technical, so I would say um, don't worry if it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But and this is really where the installer comes in to help you navigate these options. So one big one is a maximum usable capacity, that's the total amount of electricity that your battery can store and therefore how long it can power your home during an outage. Uh, next, you have the power rating, which is how much electricity can be discharged at any one time. And this is important based on whether, let's say, during an outage, you want to be able to power your refrigerator versus powering a light. Um, you'll need a higher power rating for that refrigerator. Um, and then finally, the round trip efficiency is just the effectiveness of the battery at um, discharging all the energy that's put into it. And this percentage does vary between different models or different instruments. So it's a good thing to look into. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so if you're interested in learning more about your solar options with SunShares, uh, there's some next steps. Next slide, please. Um, and really it's just to sign up on our website. Um, and I recommend when you go to our website, you can also check out um, our discounts more specifically. We have 
the exact panel offerings and prices uh, in a per watt basis that you can check out. You can also learn more about us and our providers. Um, and so if you check, click that big sign up button in the middle, next slide, please. We'll take you to our sign up page. We'll ask you for some contact information so that our installers can reach you. Um, we'll ask what pro product offerings you're interested in, whether you're interested in going solar, um, getting battery storage or both. Um, and then we'll also ask you to indicate which installers you want to contact you. Um, next slide, please. Oh, that might be the last one. Oh, well, that's not happening in this presentation, but um, those are our three selected installers. Um, great. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, that's it for me. Oh, sorry, and I'm going to introduce Cassidy from SFPC. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Cassidy. I work with the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission, which is the city's department that handles water, power, and wastewater services for all of San Francisco. Um, so today I'm going to specifically focus on our power programs um, since we're talking about solar um, and Bayron today. Um, so the PUC has two power supply programs. The first is Hetch Hetchy Power, um, which is a hydropower and solar system that services municipal buildings, so city hall, libraries, um, SFUSD schools, et cetera, um, some other large buildings like affordable housing, um, and then city services like Muni as well. Um, and then we also have Clean Power SF, which services most San Francisco residents and businesses. And together, our power, um, our power programs are providing more than 70% of the power to San Francisco. Next slide, please. So I wanted to talk a little bit more specifically about Clean Power SF, um, since I'm going to venture, I guess, that most folks on this webinar are Clean Power SF customers. So Clean Power SF is what's called a Community Choice Aggregation Program, or CCA, for, sh um, for short. So CCA programs are all throughout the state of California um, and actually the entire United States. And basically what CCA programs are is where the local government um, can come in and they take over the energy buying portion of your electric bill. So at the very start, we decide um, where and what energy sources are providing energy for our customers. So we go out and we buy wind, solar, um, we buy geothermal energy, et cetera. And then we provide that energy to PG&E and they deliver it and distribute it um, to homes and businesses in San Francisco. So um, with uh, being a CCA program, we again are part of a city run agency um, and we are a not-for-profit program. And we're currently serving um, around 380,000 San Franciscans um, with PG&E accounts, which includes renters as well. Next slide. So um, as a San Francisco resident, um, you're automatically enrolled into Clean Power SF. It's by law, all CCAs are auto-enroll programs. Um, you would have received notices in the mail either when you moved in or two years ago when we did enrollments. Um, so everybody is enrolled at the green level, which you can see on the far left which means that at least 50% of your energy that's coming to your home or business is renewable. Um, and the goal for our green product is to be carbon free by 2030. But we do have the option if you wanted to do a little more to upgrade to our super green product, which is 100% renewable. Um, it costs for a single family home about one to $2 per month more. Um, I am a San Francisco resident. I live in an apartment. I don't have um, much of it difference in my energy bill to upgrade to super green. And again, that's ensuring that all of the energy um, for your home or business is coming from renewable energy sources. Um, so you're eliminating your carbon footprint associated to the energy use in your home or business. Um, and another great thing about super green is that you can, if you're a green customer, you can upgrade to super green, try it out. If you decide it's not for you, um, you can downgrade at any time. There's not a long-term contract or anything involved. Um, so super green is also a great option if you are looking into putting solar on your home, um, or if you do have solar on your home, I'll talk about that in a minute, but you can still be a super green customer. Um, and then lastly, you do have the option to opt out of um, our service and go back to full PG&E service, um, and they're offering 39% renewable energy right now. Um, next slide, please. Um, so talking a little bit more about how Clean Power SF interacts with um, customers who have rooftop solar, you would become a NEM customer, which stands for net energy metering, which essentially just means you have solar on your rooftop. 
So if you either already have solar on your rooftop or you're looking, or you're looking into this, um, you sign up through PG&E to be um, a net energy metering customer that automatically gets applied to um, your Clean Power SF um, bill and service as well. So there's no additional sign up. Um, but if you're a Clean Power SF customer, then you do get um, a net sur surplus compensation, which means at the end of the year, if you are generating more solar energy from your panels than you are using in your home, we'll actually buy that energy back from you. Um, and the net surplus compensation that we pay is about three times higher than PG&E's rates right now. On the other hand, um, this doesn't happen too often, but if you have solar panels and you're not generating enough energy for your home, you can still be a super green customer and then any additional energy that you might need in your home um, would be supplied by us and it could be 100% renewable. And then the last plug that I wanted to make is the city also has some funding available for low income customers through a program called Go Solar SF. That is a rebate program to assist with installing residential solar panels. So if you think that you might fall into the um, low income category, then I would, and you wanna um, install solar on your roof, I would definitely look into Go Solar SF um, and make sure that you can use those funds. Um, and that is the conclusion of my presentation. So we'll hand it over to Becca, I think. Yeah, um, thank you all. So I'll go through um, some questions that we have in um, the chat right now. And if you do have any questions still, please feel free to put them in Q&A. Um, so the first question, um, are you eligible for SunShares if you already have panels but want solar storage now? And what about the federal tax credit? Is that available to existing solar owners? Um, yeah, that's a great question. Um, first of all, yes, if you already have solar panels, um, you can have a battery storage system added to your solar system uh, through SunShare. So definitely a yes to that. Um, and with the federal tax credit, um, essentially how that works is that you can claim it one time. So if you have had solar system, solar already for a few years, but you have never claimed the tax credit, you may still be able to claim it on next year's income taxes, for example. Um, and if you do so, then I'm not a tax professional. This is something that you definitely do need to talk to a professional about, but you may be able to include the cost of um, installing, a, installing a battery in that application for the tax credit. Um, for example, like if you've got solar and storage right now, the battery would be able to be included um, in the total installed amount. Um, but yeah, I would just talk to a tax advisor about that. Great, thank you. Um, next question, is solar battery storage possible in all communities? I didn't think it was allowed in San Francisco. Um, yes, I think so. Um, is any, if anybody from the city of San Francisco has a different answer, I think, but I think yes is the answer. All right, um, next question. I've had sun shares come to my house in previous years, and since we don't have an electric car and many of our appliances are gas, such as our clothes dryer, dryer and stove slash oven. They told us it doesn't financially make sense. Do you think that is still the case? Um, yeah, so that definitely is something that can happen if um, you have very minimal electric usage. Um, it's possible that in the recent years, I don't know how long it's been, but a few things may have changed. Um, solar is always getting cheaper and electric rates have been going up. So that may change the calculation for you if you've noticed um, an increase in your electric bills. Um, also, if you are going to make any of the electrification improvements that Jason was mentioning, um, like replacing uh, getting a heat pump water heater or an electric range, um, that can also change that calculation because you'll have a larger electric load. Um, so that those things can make sense, a lot of sense to do together. Okay, and then we have a question about the PG&E $70 tax on solar. I don't know if that's something you can speak to, Maggie. Um, I think that this question may be about the changes to NEM that may be coming. Um, I guess one of the proposals that's under consideration is having solar um, homeowners pay a fee um, to support like uh, the charges, like the grid maintenance charges, but that's just one proposal that's under consideration. And they are currently, I think it's January that the changes to NEM are supposed to be announced from, P from a CPUC, CPUC, so unknown at this point. 
Okay, next question. I understand that PV panels and components are often made in China and may be built using slave labor. Have you looked at this? Do you have a mechanism to avoid this? Um, yeah, this is a really good question that like a lot of the solar industry is very focused on right now. Um, one thing that is happening is the uh, Biden administration is not letting in any manufactured uh, commodity of any kind um, into the country right now that can't verify that there was no human rights abuses in any part of its supply chain. So that's why you may have heard there's a huge pileup of um, ships coming in uh, in the Port of Los Angeles that have been out there for weeks in many cases as they try to verify this. Um, so that is affecting the solar industry. Um, and luckily our suppliers have already um, taken pretty proactive steps before this to um, have as much of the manufacturing as possible from their, um, their solar panels done, hopefully in the US if possible or in other countries outside of China. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is something that everybody is trying to verify right now. And um, we mostly rely on our installers who have been, again, like I said, very proactive about it. Thank you. Um, next question. I'm not sure if you can speak to this one, Maggie. Uh, we are an 18 unit condo association. What is our best way to get solar and clean energy assistance and funding assistance? Um, well, I will say that Sunshares is aimed at single family homes generally. Um, and so I would recommend um, if you're interested in reaching out to our installers because they do do um, other types of installations, maybe not through SunShares and you may not be able to get our discounted rate. So that's one avenue. Um, otherwise, I'm not sure. And I don't know if any of the other panelists can um, speak to other clean energy options that they may have. Um, I'd say that uh, for this is Jason Green with Bayren. Um, with that, you might actually reach out to Bayren Multifamily, and I can uh, leave a link in the, um, in the chat here for it. But they may have a better understanding of, of the solar um, benefits and programs out there, rebates uh, for solar PV on those types of um, multifamily unit places. Um, but other than that, outside of that, I don't really know off the top of my head or if we have any, if Bayren um, Residential has any direct input for you. So. Okay, thank you. Um, Maggie, another question. What about options for leasing or renting solar panels? Is that something available through these providers? What is the average cost of installing solar taking into account rebates and discounts? Um, yeah, so the first part of the question, all of our three installers offer the option to um, purchase your solar system outright with cash um, or do a lease or do a power purchasing agreement. Um, we generally recommend that people buy their solar systems um, and there are, our um, installers can recommend a lot of different financing options um, to get a loan to purchase a system because that is how you will accrue the most financial benefit um, as a result of actually owning the system. Um, so you can lease it in answer to that part of the question. And then the average cost of installing solar, um, I can put into the chat right now, a link to our page with the products and pricing. Um, so these prices that you'll see there, um, there's different prices for each panel offering um, and that per watt price is the installed price of the system um, before you take off the uh, federal solar tax credit. Um, so that price includes our discount, but not the tax credit, which will reduce it by 26%. All right, thank you. Um, let me see if we have any more. Um, so what is the best way to combine the Bayren and SunShares programs? Who would coordinate? Um, Jason, I'll let you take that one. I'll go ahead and ask the question again. I was, I was answering another question. <laughs> go sure. ahead. Um, what is the best way to combine the Bayren and SunShares programs? Who would coordinate? Uh, you would just reach out to both of us. So Bay Bayren Home Plus is really separate from SunShares um, with different, different services, products that we have. So you would reach out to say, I mean, to be biased, I would say reach out to us first because we're going to help you figure out how to make your house uh your watt diet, we're going to have to fine tune your home 
so that it's comfortable, it's efficient, um, it's safe. And then maybe you don't need as big of an HVAC, electric HVAC, or maybe you don't need as big of a water heater anymore. Um, maybe your bills have, have dropped. And so now your watt diet is lower. And then you go to SunShare after you say, okay, I figured out my house. I don't have to have a 15 kilowatt system on my home because my elect electric consumption is through the roof. I've fine tuned that now. I only need a five kilowatt. So I'd say reach out to us first. Uh, figure out if there's anything you can do that's cost effective to upgrade. If you've already done all those things, then reach out to SunShare for the next steps. All right, thank you. Um, Maggie, is there an average ballpark number of years for return on investment of buying versus renting solar? Um, yeah, there definitely is. I don't know it off the top of my head, but I would definitely recommend signing up for SunShares and then talking directly to our installers about it because they can definitely give you that number. And then also when you see a solar proposal, um, that proposal will include an estimate of when you will get your return on your investment um, and a total like financial layout of um, what your initial costs will be and then over time um, how those costs will be reduced and when you'll start making a profit from your system. So that'll be all be laid out very specifically in each proposal that you receive. Okay, thank you. Um, Jason, is there a consultation fee with Bayren? Um, how do we schedule? Sorry about that, answering more questions. Um, so uh, you can just write a check to Jason Green. It's 50 bucks an hour. And I'll give you that address. No, it's actually free. There's no charge. It's free and unlimited energy advising. Um, we don't have any fees uh, for reaching out to us. I've talked to homeowners for the past five years continuously um, for upgrades they're doing. So there's no charge to reach out to us, uh, use our services, no charge for the incentives. Um, there may be times when someone is applying for rebates uh, through the contractors uh, that they use a third party to do that for testing and such, and there can be fees for that, but it's not something that we actually charge for rebates. Great, thank you. And if you look in the chat, um, we have the link uh, to actually schedule a time with an advisor. I highly recommend if you'd like to talk to an advisor to actually go to this link. Um, I'll email it to everyone who's registered as well to schedule 15 or 30 minutes when is most convenient for you. Um, that, that is the best way to reach an advisor. Um, let's see. Okay, let me see if we have any more questions. There was uh, a question earlier. About, oh, there was a question earlier about preparing or um, I think it was from Alexa in the chat. Let me see, where was that at? Um, da, 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 da. Go ahead, sorry, I'll keep reading this. <laughs> we have a question about getting a copy of the Q&A. Um, I will have to see how to make that work with um, Zoom, but I will work on uh, doing that. Um, I think that may be all the questions that we have for now. I found, um, I found the one from Alexa, if I can answer that one real quick. Sure. Um, she just asked basically, uh, I, I was wondering who came to Alexa that said it may not be worthwhile to upgrade for solar. Um, we get that quite often. Solar companies will tell a homeowner, you don't spend enough on electricity. You don't have enough electric devices to make it make sense for solar PV. Uh, that's again, if you're being told that, come to us, come to Bayren. We'll help you figure out how to figure out your watt diet, what's necessary for solar PV. Uh, and if all else fails, if you're really wanting solar right now, um, you're ready to go on it. I'd say a nonprofit to reach out would be sunwork.org, but I don't actually think that they uh, currently um, work with San Francisco. They used to, but it's something you can reach out to and see if they quali you qualify for them. They install solar at cost. So it's uh, another nonprofit and it's, a, it's worthwhile, um, but they may not actually serve your area right now. 
All right, um, and we have a question about material in other languages. Um, we do have a web, um, a series of webinars coming up, um, Energy 101, that go over the Bayron Home Plus and a number of other programs that are coming up in Spanish, Cantonese, and Mandarin. Um, I can go ahead and include a link to those webinars in the follow-up email to everyone. Um, so that, and then um, we have uh, on the web page and resources um, for Bayron Home Plus, there's uh, content in Chinese and um, Spanish. Uh, Maggie, do you have in-language content for uh, SunShares? Um, currently, we don't. We're working on creating a Spanish translation, um, but yeah, that's something that we're working on developing right now. Great. Okay. Um, I think that is all the questions that we have for now. Um, so I will send a follow-up email with a link to this recording if, as long as you registered for um, the workshop and I'll include um, the various resource links that have been um, discussed today. Um, and a big thank you to all of our speakers for today. Thanks so much for having us. Thanks for having us guys. I'm, I'm, I'm still answering questions, so. <laughs> But yeah, thanks for having us. Okay, I'll, I'll wait then if you're still answering a question. Um, we also have a question around doing a presentation for other um, nonprofit organizations. Um, I think uh, SunShares, how, how long are you doing presentations until Maggie? Is Maggie still here? No, I think we lost Maggie. Okay. Um, All right, I'm done. Thanks, Becca. All right, thank you.